Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where Roger and I have returned because it's time for my weekend reading report. The fantastic program where I talk about all of the exciting things that I read during the previous week. What's more thrilling than that? Nothing. Nothing in this world, I'm sure. So what did I read last week? Well, I have my list here that I'm making of all the books that I'm reading for the 500 book challenge. The challenge where I have to read 500 books that I own before I will buy any new ones. And it's taken a long time, this challenge. But, you know, I'm making some progress. Uh, a wee little bit here and there. So what did I read this past week? Well, everything I read, actually, for the past couple weeks, I've been reading electronically, either on my tablet or on my Kindle. And the reason for that is that I haven't been home much this month. I've been I've been around, away from the manor. So a lot of the things I planned to read this month, I didn't read. I've been I've been reading things that have been lurking on my Kindle, sometimes for years and years. But I'll finish a book, I won't be home, and so I'll be like, well, I guess I'll just have to find something else in my Kindle to read, and that's what I've been doing. But I have thousands of books on my Kindle, in my Kindle library. And many, many things that are appropriate for Horror Mayhem, the fantastic reading event that's going on right now, Created by the bookish Bryant's Horror Mayhem, an event dedicated to reading horror fiction. So that's what I've been doing. Well, the first thing I read this week, the first book I finished, book number 138 on the 500 book challenge is this. This is the final book, final collection, collecting Walter Simonson's magnificent run on Thor. I am reading every issue of Thor from the first run of Thor, which ran from the early 1960s until the mid-1990s. And Walt Simonson's run on Thor is definitely the best, the best run from anybody on this book, uh, on this comic book. It's fantastic. Walter Simonson's run was amazing. It's not only one of the greatest runs ever on Thor, it's one of the greatest runs probably in comic book history. Definitely in the history of Marvel Comics, that's for sure. It's, it was wonderful. Last week I mentioned that the issues I was reading at the time, it, it looked like the best had already passed for Walter Simonson's Thor at that point. Thor uh, was still a great comic book, of course. Walter Simonson was still writing the book, but Sal Buscema has taken over the artwork. And Sal Buscema did some really excellent work on this run of Thor. I like Sal Buscema. He's just, you know, he's not Walter Simonson. And the stories themselves seemed less inspired at the point that I was reading last week. But the stories in this... In this book are really great. So the this run, Walter Simonson's Thor, it ended on a high note. In particular, there was one issue where Walter Simonson came back to illustrate Thor in, in a book where Thor is fighting the Midgard serpent in a battle to the death, and it's all done in splash full page splash pages. It was magnificent. But all of the issues in this collection are really good. They're really good. So I, I was happy to see that Walt, Walt Simonson's Thor ended on a high note. It, it ended well. I will do a full review of Walter Simonson's Thor next month. I'm due to get the new edition of Walter Simonson's Thor Omnibus. There's a, there's a new edition of that coming out next month. It was delayed, but now it's coming out, it looks like, in June. Right after, I, right after the point where I, was, where I was reading this issue, the omnibus comes out. That's just how it goes. But when that comes out, I will do an epic comic book Wednesday on Walter Simonson's Thor, and I'll talk about Thor. And then Steve Donahue over on his channel will talk about 
Walter Simonson's Thor as well. It'll be a great time, but this was wonderful. Not the only Thor I read though, because I got this in the mail. There were a couple annuals that came out during Walter Simonson's run on Thor that Walter Simonson didn't have anything to do with. And this was one of those, Thor annual number 12. This was decent. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't fantastic. It was okay. This was an okay Thor story. It was good. You know, it just was not nearly at the level of what Walter Simonson was doing on the main title. So this was decent, Thor annual number 12. I should be getting number 13, annual, Thor annual 13 in the mail, probably day after tomorrow. And then I'll read that. That was another annual that was not, that Walter Simonson didn't have anything to do with that was published at the time Walter Simonson was doing the comic book. So, you know, this was decent. So at this point on Thor, there are eight epic collections left, and I'm on, you know, eight epic collections that collect the remaining issues of Thor from the first run of Thor. And so I'm reading the issues from 1987 to 1989 right now. This is Thor Epic Collection Volume 16, War of the Pantheons. This was actually the first Thor epic collection that was ever published because they are not published in chronological order, the epic collections. And this was actually one of the first epic collections ever published. So I've had this over 10 years and finally I am reading it. So this is where I'm at. And these issues are really good. Uh, yeah, these are, these surprised me. Um, yeah, Tom DeFalco and Roger Stern write these and Ron Friends is doing the artwork and it's good stuff. Not as good as Walter Simonson, of course, but it's still, it's good. So, yeah, still reading Thor. So that was that. Now, book 139 is Interview with a Vampire by Anne Rice, which is a book I read a couple times years and years ago. And I thought I remembered this book fairly well, but it turns out that I actually when I think of this book, I'm actually thinking of the film, the movie that came out in the 90s because I watched that movie a few times. I really like that movie. Excellent adaptation of this book, which should be no surprise since Anne Rice wrote the screenplay. But this book is great. Interview with a Vampire is a great vampire book. It's just fantastic. And it's, it's no surprise to me that it was so popular. When this book came out in the 70s, in the late 70s, there probably wasn't really anything like this out there, I don't think. This kind of fascinating look into the world of vampires told from the perspective of a vampire, Louis. Louis the vampire who is turned into a vampire by the vampire Lestat. And it's... It's a fascinating story. There were a lot of things that I forgot about this story. Like I said, when I remembered it, I'm thinking of the film, which had some changes. And so every time something deviated from the film, I'm like, I don't remember this at all. And then I'm like, I vaguely remember this. But it's it's a great book. It's great. I'm going to be rereading all of the, the Vampire Chronicles. Many of the Vampire Chronicles I haven't read because I think I only read four of them. I, I got up through Tale of the Body Thief and that was it. So I, I can't speak to the quality of all the Vampire Chronicles, but this one, the first one, is, is a fantastic book. Love the characters. I mean, the vampires in this story are monsters. You know, they just go around killing people left and right. They're, they're pretty ghastly monsters when you think about it. But sympathetic when, you know, when you view them from, from within their own world. It's, it's really interesting. It's a really interesting book. And the main character, Louis, who I remembered as being kind of a whiny vampire, actually is an interesting character. How he is a character who, he was turned into a vampire kind of in a moment of weakness, he agreed to this. And really, it was either that or die, you know. 
he has a hard time giving up his humanity. And he tries to hold on to what was human in him, you know, which is a losing battle for a vampire who lives, you know, hundred who could live hundreds of years. It's an interesting story and kind of disturbing in some ways that I had forgotten about. Claudia is a fascinating character, the little child vampire who's turned into a vampire at five years old. And so her brain goes, grows older and she becomes an adult in her vampire brain. But her body, of course, always remains the body of a five-year-old, which leads to some disturb disturbing things in this book. It's interesting stuff. I did watch the first couple episodes of the Interview with a Vampire television series, the new show from, I think, AMC. It's one of those things where it's not a bad show, you know, as television shows go. But they change so much because it's like, you know, we want to change this one thing. Oh, but to do that, we have to change this other thing. And then to do that, we kind of have to change this. So, so many things were changed to make the book into this television show so that they can incorporate all of the changes they wanted to make. And even the nature of the vampires themselves is different. So while it's not, you know, a bad show, certainly the actors are good in that show. It's so different from the source material and I think some important ways. Certainly Louis is an entirely different character. You can argue that the character on the television show is actually more interesting, but is he though? I don't know. I don't think so. It's just a whole different thing. And I don't know that I'll watch any more of it. You know, I don't watch much television anyway. This was more of a case of me being curious about what they did with this book. Anyway, eh. So anyway, that was, that was Interview with a Vampire. Fantastic book. Uh, I highly recommend it. After that, I read a cheesy werewolf novel. This is book 140. This is Wolf Tracks by David Case, because I was not at home. I finished Interview of the Vampire, which I was reading on my Kindle. I had this book, Wolf Tracks. I've had it on my Kindle probably for, I don't know, nine or 10 years. I don't even know how long I've had this thing on my Kindle. It's been lurking there forever. You know, I bought it like, you know, you buy ebooks. You, you buy them and tend to read them and then you just forget about them because they're on your Kindle and you never see them. But this was an old horror novel that was published in 1980. It's basically a serial killer novel. It reads like a serial killer novel with these police officers that are hunting down the serial killer who turns out to be a werewolf. And there are some interesting ideas in this. It's, it's a decent book. It's entertaining. David Case, he's an interesting writer. He seems to have some hangups, you know, and some, there's some weird things about this book. First of all, David Case seems to hate reporters and the media, you know, so he's really, he's really down on reporters, which which you get in this book. He talks a lot about how reporters and newspapers and the media sucks. He also seems to have issues with women, if you're only judging judging that from the way he presents women in this book, which is all the female characters have issues in this book. And yeah, but the book itself was, was an entertain, entertaining werewolf story about basically hunting down a werewolf. The werewolf, who the werewolf is, is I think supposed to be a mystery, maybe, but there's a character in this book that is obviously the werewolf from like the beginning. Like, you know, this guy right away is the werewolf. So much so that I was wondering if, if this was like a, you know, is he just a red herring? Is this a case of misdirection? It can't be this guy because it's so obviously this guy. It was that guy. So you know who the werewolf is right away. What seemed like it was supposed to be a mystery really isn't a mystery. But it's still fun to see 
these police officers hunt down the werewolf. It was a, it was an entertaining story. Not the best werewolf book in the world, but you know, it was decent. So that was that. That was Wolf Tracks. Now I followed that up with book 141, which is Some of Your Blood by Theodore Sturgeon, which is another book I got years ago. I got a few Theodore Sturgeon books for my Kindle and I never read any of them. They, and this one I remember getting and I think what I had heard about this book was that it was a crime, like it was a crime novel by Theodore Sturgeon. And it is, but it's also a horror novel. And I was reminded of this book because Troy Tradeup, who did a great, who wrote a great werewolf novel, uh, he wrote The Forsaken Boy. He is on BookTube and he talked about this book recently in a video some of your blood. And it reminded me, oh, I have this book. I just never read it. And I guess I didn't realize that it was actually a horror novel. And it is. It's it's very much a horror novel. It's a kind, it's a kind of a vampire novel. In fact, you could have given this book the title Interview with a Vampire, and that title would have worked. Although this is a completely different book than that one. About a soldier who is uh, put in an asylum and a psychiatrist is working with this guy. And this guy tells the story of his life. And a good chunk of this book is that story. But the psychiatrist realizes that there are holes in this story. And so the re for the remaining part of the book, He's working with this soldier, this inmate of the asylum, to try to gain his trust and try to, because he, he knows there's something seriously wrong with this guy and that this guy is dangerous. He just doesn't know exactly how and why. But he finds out, because slowly you find out all of the things that were missing from that original narrative, which, which was a really interesting narrative. And it's just grisly and horrible and disturbing. It is, I mean, it's probably not the most disturbing book in the world, you know. It, it probably won't make anyone's most disturbing books list. There seem to be a lot of those on BookTube. But I found it tremendously disturbing. It is a disturbing book and facet, fascinating book and really well written and really engaging and gripping. And I'm glad... Troy Tradeup reminded me of this book and it's short and I had an unusual experience for me. I had some downtime and I read this book from beginning to end without interruption. I sat there and read the whole book, which never happens. I am always interrupted. I can never read for more than a half hour without something happening or me getting fidgety or something. And But this book I just sat down and read from beginning to end. And it was an absolutely gripping, incredibly disturbing novel. Highly recommend it. it this is good stuff. So I read that. And that was, I think, I think this is going to be the end of Horror Mayhem for me. I think I'm I think I'm good for horror this month. And so I moved on to Edgar Rice Burroughs. This is the Oakdale Affair. I started this book this morning. And it's a, another wee little book, and so it'll take no time at all to finish. But I just I needed something different after after that. And after all of the horror I've been reading, I'm like, you know, I think I'm good on horror for a while. So I'll read this, which actually has some horror elements to it. So I'll talk more about this book next week because I just basically, I just started it. I think I'm 50 pages in or something. But I am reading every book by Edgar Rice Burroughs and it's been a while since I've read any Edgar Rice Burroughs because of everything else that's been going on. And so, yeah, I took the opportunity to pick this up. And so I'm reading this. I don't know what I'll be reading after this. I have no idea. I did get one thing in the mail this week which was an epic collection. They are exempt from the 500 book challenge, the epic collections, because I collect them. 
And this is Avengers The Evil Reborn. This is volume one of the Avengers Epic Collections, which has stories from 1979 to 1981, including Avengers number 200, which is the most disturbing issue of the Avengers ever. This issue of the Avengers, you know, the writer of this issue, uh, issue number 200, was David Michelini. And I don't know if he was just on cocaine or stoned on some other drug or what the deal is, but Avengers number 200 is so twisted that if you read it, you'll probably need therapy. It is, it is enormously controversial, this issue. And so, yeah, that is collected in here. And they put it on the cover, which I find interesting just because it is so infamous. Um, yeah. But I got this. This is what I got this week. So Avengers, Epic Collection, Volume 11. So that's cool. Slowly getting all of the Avengers Epic Collections. Interesting stuff at the very least. And so I guess that's all I have for this week. I think. I don't think I'm forgetting anything. Am I forgetting anything, Roger? Roger doesn't think so. Okay, guys. I will catch you next time.